Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to do another video. This is um, my home network. Um, just a quick kind of tour, which we don't have to go far. It's pretty much all in one machine. Um, and that was the goal. Um, a few months ago, I had a PFSense router on an old uh, dual core Pentium, and it was tucked away in a, in a cubby in a desk. Um, <clears throat> and uh, ran that for years. I had a front end machine lined up here where I would watch TV and, and those kind of things and it would um, you know it would go to sleep when I wasn't using it <clears throat> and then I had a file server machine that ran 24 7 um, so I decided to kind of combine all of that into one machine and that's my server um, I've already done a video uh, recently when I moved to this case which is perfect for a server <clears throat> um, so now yeah, you know, I've got everything combined into one machine and, and it works great. So I've got my uh, router from my ISP and it's still set up as a router. Um, and then it goes from there into the server into a dual interface NIC um, on the machine. And I have that um, disabled on the local machine but accessible from uh, the virtual machine when I'm running a virtual version of uh, PFSense. So if I were to go to properties under this, um, oh, that's the wrong one. Oh, change adapter settings. Okay, so see I've got the two. These are the dual interface NICs. And if I go to properties, everything's disabled except for VMware bridge protocol. So um, that's how I do that and then it goes you know the PFSense takes it from there and I can also run other virtual machines on that interface and then it's kind of uh, somewhat in a DMZ um, it's just separate from the rest of my network so we'll go through each virtual machine quickly um, so we've got PFSense it runs here and um, of course you have a web interface where you can um, you know just set things up the way you want it um, I only have a few kind of services running I haven't done a whole lot with it but I do have a uh, a squid server running so if I'm downloading the same 100 megabyte file to a bunch of machines um, it'll notice that and it'll just serve it straight from PFSense instead of reaching out to the internet to get it um, so you can just transfer it at LAN speeds right over to your computer um, and I mean really that's about it um, so PFSense uh, router I've tried a few others I started with IPCOP um, I tried Smoothwall for a little bit and then eventually moved to PFSense and so far I've really really liked it um, it's been good so after that um, I've got a couple other servers um, I have an Ubuntu server which needs updates um, all it really is is an NFS share um, and if I run into other things that I want to run on uh, that I need an Ubuntu Linux install for then I've got it available um, the main reason I need an NFS share is for UDA server and that's the ultimate deployment appliance try saying that ten times fast um, and that's this is the web interface for UDA so I've got OS templates and everything. Um, so right now, all it does is Clonezilla and Gparted, and it's it's a boot server. So I can um, I can just boot straight off the network, run Clonezilla, and I can pull uh, hard drive images over the network and, and clone drives, or uh, Gparted if I just want to go through and um, format a drive. So that's UDA. Um, it's pretty old. It's not really supported anymore. Um, I know there's a few other um, similar uh, things that are going around nowadays I just haven't really messed with them yet um, I can't remember the name of the one I tried but it was just way too involved for what I really wanted I just wanted a quick easy way to run things off the network um, another advantage that has is I have a motherboard that has dead USB ports even the uh, onboard headers all of it does not work whatsoever <laughs> So there's no booting from a USB drive on there, even with an add-in USB card. So I can still boot off the network and still run uh, these kind of programs and um, 
clone images or whatever I need to do. Um, and then the last virtual machine is my game server. Uh, right now it's just running two um, OpenRCT2 servers. Uh, one for friends and one that's kind of just for me. Um, it's a great mod if you're into Roller Coaster Tycoon. Um, and uh, yeah, so if I run, if there's any other game servers I want to run, I can run them on this. This is on the external interface. Um, it just makes things a little bit easier and it keeps things separate if there is a game server that has some kind of vulnerability or something. Um, and I can also just go to um, my settings here and then um, with a network adapter all, all I have to do is change this drop down menu to bridged and then it's on the internal network so if I'm hosting a LAN party or something and I want an internal LAN server I can just swap that over run the server and it's only accessible on the LAN. Um, as far as virtual machines uh, that's pretty much it for that um, I may run a, a few more later on, um, but that's what I've got going so far. Um, and then this machine on the host machine, I've got a few things going. Um, I've got an iSpy server and a five camera setup right now, um, but I may do more later. Their D-Link wireless uh, camera setup um, outside the house, kind of in a perimeter kind of thing. Um, and I can also access that from anywhere on my phone, just pull it up and see what's going on at the house or uh, watch recorded uh, videos if it senses motion, things like that. Um, it's a really good uh, software. I've really been been happy with it. Um, beyond that, this is also my Plex server. If you're not familiar with Plex, it's an amazing uh, piece of software and it just runs as a server and you um, give it access to all your media folders, say music, TV shows, movies, any of that, and it automatically pulls uh, data from the internet so it'll have like, um, you know, like an image of the, the DVD cover and it'll have like uh, the actors that are in it, all that kind of little information, it pulls that automatically. So you don't have to go through and rename stuff, you don't have to really do anything, um, as long as it's named somewhat correctly. Uh, it should pull uh, from the internet and see exactly what it is, and that's a great piece of software. Um, you can buy the app for $4.99, one-time fee, and then you can use um, your phone anywhere that you have internet and access your media um, that you have at home, and it just goes straight to your phone. So that's a really cool uh, piece of software as well. Um, <clears throat> I think that's about it um, for servers and software that I run. Um, if you have any suggestions, I'm always looking for some other neat little uh, server to run, um, especially if it's something I can really use. Um, in the past, I played around a lot with FTP and web and uh, all those kind of things, and I'm not really into that right now. I just don't really have the time for it or really just a good use case for it. Um, so that's why I'm not really messing with that kind of stuff. But as far as servers that you can run at home, like, like Plex and iSpy, it's great. I, I love running that kind of stuff. So if you have any suggestions, please leave a comment below. Um, and I'll check it out and see if it's something that I can use on my home network. So, yeah, that's about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And um, like I said, any ideas, comments, questions, uh, anything, just leave it down in the comments below. So, thanks for watching.